the best of all of them, wasn't he? Everybody wanted to be George Best, including myself. He jumped from the A team one week to the first team the following week. He never played in the reserves. He just jumped and, and never came back. He just played on the stage at Old Trafford and, and was a genius straight away. Warm character, great player. I mean, I can't talk about any of, of the players nowadays in the same breath as George Best. We had a lad called Paul Reaney who played for us and Don Revy made it Paul's job to mark George. And I've seen or heard George and say Paul Reaney was the hardest fullback that he ever had to play against. So Don Revy used to say to Paul, Paul, you mark George. We will play 10 again, 10. I don't care if you don't have a kick of the ball, don't let George have one. And George and Paul used, Paul used to follow him all over either Ellen Road or Old Trafford. He's a phenomenal dribbler. He could create and score goals. And he also worked hard out of possession. I mean, if you look at the old videos of George Best, you always see him running back and tackling. He could tackle as well. Very good in the air. And at his time, was was probably the best player in the world. But I tell you what, he was as brave as a lion, you know. People don't realise that about him. He had so many all-round strengths. Um, and he was just you know, a player that, if ever Manchester United are a match of the day, you always made sure you were watching to look at them all, really, because George Best... You know, was was phenomenal. Great player, great player. He could do it all, couldn't he? I mean, he had, when you think of the, what the top players earn and, and how they are fated these days, compared to what he had in his armory. George could beat four or five on a mazy run and then come back and beat him again. And then he'd take so many knocks, you know, for a, for a frail lad, really, you know. And he was brave. He was so brave as well. He had fantastic skills to beat people, scored goals, but he could tackle. He could tackle, and he could edit. He was good in the air. He was great in the air. He could edit and he could do anything. He could pass it with both feet. He's the best really when he was the complete one. He was such a lovely fella. You know, I, I've took people down to his local pub, the Fiend Arms in uh, Chelsea there, and from Nor Norway and Sweden and Oslo, and he, he'll sit there all day having photograph time and do, you know, that's George. God alone knows what he'd be worth now. I've always, always loved George. George was, you know, I, I, could, I, could, I could sit and watch George play. Well, lots of times I had to because he was that good. He does hundreds and hundreds of good things for individuals like me, but you never hear about it. You know, you only hear he goes off the rails now and then and it's front page, back page and all the middle pages. But I know for a fact that he does a lot of people like me favours up and down the country every day, every week of the year and he don't get the credit he deserves. I couldn't say a bad word against him. I had a testimonial down here and he rang me up. He said, Ozzy, I've always wanted to play in a Chelsea shirt. Can I play in your testimonial? And he put 5,000 on the gate just like that. Bump. That's how good he was. I mean, we'd been at um, Old Trafford for a year when George came over from Belfast and he'd spent a couple of days at Old Trafford. And then he ran home. He was homesick, you know, but uh, Joe Armstrong, the chief scout, went over there and dragged him back. And we all tried to make him, you know, uh, forget about his homesickness. And, and um, we formed a, a great relationship very early on. I mean, when you go to uh, Man United, they have a couple of players like Johnny Giles and Nobby Stiles looked after me, you know, and, and guided me in the right direction. And, and when uh, George came over, there was me, Eamon Dunphy. Uh, his best mate was David Sadler, who looked after him because they got in the first team very early and roomed together and things like that. But we looked after George the best we could and um, he certainly never forgot it and he's, he's done me so many favours. Nobody could believe, I think one stage, that Barry was going to bring the George Best down to little old Dunstable again and play for the, 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 you know, a, team, a town of our size. So I went to Manchester and uh, for a weekend and went into George's club, Slack Alice, had a drink or two and I said, have you heard of... He said, what are you doing now, Baz? I went, I've just got to play a manager's job at Dunstable. And he went, where? <laughs> Uh, we even took bets on at work that would George turn up. I went Dunstable and I says, you ain't playing, because at the time he'd had a row with Tommy Dock, weren't playing for Manchester United. So I says, you wouldn't do me a favour and come down and guess for a game, you know, the place needs wakening up, you know. So he said, yeah, of course I would, but obviously Tommy's got to agree to it. 
So I went to the cliff at United and Paddy Crowan, who I knew from my time there, introduced me to the doc who I didn't know and I says, you know, can I have George Best for a couple of games, uh, pre-season games, friendlies? And he went, well, I ain't being funny. He said, if I can't get Best to play with me at Man United, you ain't going to get him to play with Dunstable. So I didn't have the art to tell Tom I'd already agreed it with George and I went, well, all right, I'll go and see if he's all right. So anyway, I came back and I said, Tommy, he's agreed to play. And he said, who are you playing? I went, I don't know, I ain't got no opposition yet. He said, well, I'll bring a side, Manchester United 11. George was obviously a big name in them days and to come and play for our local town was a big thing for us. The town was buzzing days beforehand and there were people with red and uh, blue and white colours for Dunstable and the Man United colours, this sort of thing. Lots of people down here, temporary stands, people everywhere, talking in the town about it. There was grandmas and granddads and, and young children, um, people on the, on the side of the pitch, people probably that had come from quite a way outside Dunstable, not necessarily local people. There was 10,000 people in at Dunstable inside the ground and 10,000 people outside on a Tuesday night. It was absolutely unbelievable packed. The whole Bedfordshire was packed. And I can remember um, standing on the side of the terracing up there and looking over to the factory on the far side and that was, roof was full of people who used to work at AC Delco looking at the game and uh, along the side of the pitch there where, where the fence is there were people um, standing over there and yes there was a big buzz uh, before the game, and about half past five, quarter to six, the rest of the team had arrived and Man United had arrived. But true to form, George was late. It came in a big flash motor. Um, like we don't see cars like that around here very often, but he, he came in a big motor. Um, lots of cheering going on when he came into the ground. The focus was on was on George really throughout the game. Although um, it was Man United and the, you know the great Man United, but um, no, it was still George. I mean, he had his full set on. All the, all, the, all the trimmings. Really didn't really watch the game much, just watched him. The game went the wrong way, first of all. The Dunstable were 2 0 down at the, at the, at the half time. And then, um, you know, throughout the, the, the second half, well, throughout the game actually, every time George got the ball, there was a big buzz and they were shouting and screaming, waiting for George to do his, his, you know, his wonderful magic tricks, which he managed to sometimes. He was fairly well marked by some of the United lads who didn't want to be, you know, put down by, by George Best, right? And, uh, but he was out to prove a point himself. But in the end, Dunstable came back, it was, it was two all, and then the final, I think 10 minutes to go, they got the winner. Most of the people didn't even know what the score was at the end. We beat him 3-2. Just watching Georgie Best play down here was the, was the main thing. We were on the map then. Dunstable Town was recognised you know, throughout the country to a certain extent. Because of George, it got me to attract a lot of players that never even heard of Dunstable Town, you know, and, and that year we, we got promotion scoring 105 league goals. There are people in the town now who probably still mention the fact when George Best came to Dunstable and there's probably quite a few of them, I suppose, have got programmes and this sort of thing and souvenirs. I think George was a, he was a, 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 um, a one-off to a certain extent, George, within those days. I mean, everybody, everybody liked George Best. There wasn't, I don't think, even the players who played against him really admired George Best for his talent, you know, his overall enthusiasm for the game. He was a great, he loved the football, he loved football. Fantastic. I mean, I don't think there's words in the English language that are, that are good enough. I mean, you could use all the great words and that was George Best with a little bit extra added on. He was an absolutely magnificent footballer. And not only that, he was an absolutely magnificent fella. I mean, an absolutely great fella to play with, a great fella to have about the club. Everybody, everybody loved him. I mean, he got a lot of adverse publicity at that particular time because I think George was the first ever, the first ever that was put up there as a superstar. But nobody really knew what a superstar was. It was the first time a footballer really had been in the front page of a newspaper. And nobody understood it to a great degree. But he was a great fella. He could turn up here on a Saturday and it was reported after a night out on a Friday and perform as though he's been resting for about three days. Quite an incredible player. We'll, we'll never see the like of him again. No chance.